Are you wondering about the difference between Git Fork and Git Clone? I'm Cameron McKenzie, the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com, and I wanted to talk to you about how Git Fork and Git Clone compare. The difference between Git Fork and Clone really comes down to how much control a developer is allowed to have over a given repository. Notice I've got two repositories here. I'd like to contrast my repository, Cameron MCNZ, with the Java revolutionary Jay Guevara over here. There's a handsome repository called Rock, Paper, Scissors, and you know, this is my repository. I'm Cameron MCNZ. Um, but you could have even imagined that this particular repository might even be the team repository that I'm a member of. If I want, I can git clone this repository so long as I have that GitHub URL. I got that GitHub URL right over here. That clones the repository. Let's take a look at the clone. Oh, there's lots of objects in there, so it's gonna take just a moment. But you can see that yeah, that repository has been cloned, all sorts of code right in here. And, you know, I could even move into that repository. Do something like touch a file. There we go, it's touched. Now do a git add and maybe even a git commit. I did it. And with that git commit, I can git push back to origin. Now, of course, this is my repository, but you could also imagine it's a team repository. I'm not going to use the GitHub sign in. I am just going to use the standard open SSH. Type in my username. See if I can remember my password. Looks like I did. And of course, now that change has been pushed up to the repository. Now, of course, this is my repository, Cameron MCNZ. Notice a file has just been added, but you could imagine that this is the team repository and I'm a member of it. And anybody that's a member of that team repository and has rights to the repository can not only clone it, you can clone any public repository, but I can also push back to it. And as long as I provide my credentials, it's no problem. Now, what about Che? Che over here wants to clone that repository. Now I'm gonna go back to the credentials manager and you'll notice that it's permanently saved that Cameron MCNZ permission. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to see if Che can do the same thing. Che wants to use this repository. Che wants to clone this repository. That's Che with a J, not Che with a C. And so Che comes over here, says git clone, pastes in the GitHub URL for the Cameron MCNZ repository. Wow, look at that. Everything looks fantastic. Even if we come over here and take a look at the folder in which J copied to, it looks like all of the code is over here. And J can even move into that directory. Add a file. Do a git add command. Do a commit. But now watch this. Che isn't a member of that Cameron MCNZ repository. He's not a member of that team. So Che can do all this work, but Jay can't push. So if Jay does git push origin, do you want to connect to GitHub? No, I want to do it through open SSH. So we type in the username, type in the password. And look, the requested URL returned 403. Che cannot push back to that repository. Che is not a member. Che can clone it. Che can work on it locally. But they have no rights to it unless somebody explicitly adds them. And look, Cameron MCNZ doesn't trust Che, so that's never going to happen. So what can Che do? Well, Che can actually go to Cameron's repo and fork that repository. So I'm going to come over in the separate browser in which Che is logged in. Che is going to look at Cameron's rock, paper, scissors repository. And instead of cloning it, Che is going to click on this fork button. Now note that fork is not actually a git command. There's no git fork command. But it's a feature that GitHub and GitLab provide. So Che says, I'm going to fork this repository. And now notice, this repository is completely Che's. Che owns this repository outright. So Che's gonna come over here, delete the 
clone of Cameron's rock, paper, scissors, maybe even go into the Che Guevara folder and delete the previously cloned repository so everything's fresh. And now Che's gonna say, you know what? Instead of copying Cameron's rock, paper, scissors, I'm gonna create a copy, create a clone of the fork that I made. And so Che comes over here, opens up his bash shell. That is a git clone of the fork. The clone comes down into Jay's local Che's local workspace. So we can see the new rock, paper, scissors. Che can even move in there, so CD Rockstar. And then touch my forked file. Do the git add command, do the git commit command. Now watch what happens when we push. Now we're not pushing to the Cameron MCNZ repository, we're pushing to the repository that Che forked. Asking for credentials. And now watch this. Now it goes. And if we go back to the fork and I do a refresh here on the fork, notice that we now have my forked file that was just pushed up. But over on the Cameron MCNZ repository, look at that, there's no forked file. So the key difference between the git fork and the git clone command really comes over to how much control the developer that's performing the operation wants to have or even is allowed to have over the target repository. If a developer wants to be able to push back and forth to their own copy of the repository, make it isolated from other repositories, really have full control, well in that case they can create a fork. But if a developer is working on a project with other members of the team, well in that case a developer is probably going to do a clone and then push back and forth to that target repository and share their code with all of the other developers on the team. Now, by the way, sometimes people wonder, hey, is it possible to take these changes in your fork and send them back to the original repository? And you know what? That is absolutely possible. So if I want to take this change and have that incorporated back into the original, I can say new pull request. I can say here on Che Guevara, I can say, hey, Cameron, pull this code. So I create a pull request indicating that I've made some amazing changes to the code and then Cameron over here can log in, see if there's a pull request. Notice there's one by Che Guevara. We can then take a look at that and then with this particular pull request we can then pull this in. Now it looks like I'm not signed in over here so let me sign in and I'll do this pull request. And here we go, it says there's a pull request. Do you wanna add this pull request in? I'll take a look at it. I'll say, yeah, that's some great code there. And then I just have to say, merge this pull request, do the confirm. And now you'll actually see that back in the rock, paper, scissors repository, we actually have that forked file now. So even though you forked the repository, you know, with tools like GitHub and GitLab and Bitbucket, you've still got the ability to take your changes and push them back. And you often see that that's a central part of GitHub flow, GitLab flow, things that are a little different than the standard Git flow. But anyways, there you go. That is the key difference between the git fork and git clone command, especially if you're doing a git fork on GitHub or GitLab.